This week we got a better look at things such as Greninja, the Smash Run, and Final Destination. We also get some new information about assist trophies and Pokemon in each version. And I seriously don't know what this thing is. This is NSBD! Out of all the information revealed in the Direct, I found Greninja's reveal to be the most interesting as well as the most shocking. I am not going to delve into my opinion of him too much because I do so in the video I am making covering the Direct, which is still being worked on in case you are wondering. All I will say is he feels like a fresh new Pokemon because instead of focusing on his Pokemon abilities, they are instead using them to go with a more ninja motif, an idea which I am fond of. This ties into his side special, which is revealed here, Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak seems like a mixture between Fox's side special and Sheik's, though I am not sure how the charging will work. Does the attack begin as soon as you press the button and you stop moving as soon as it is released, or do you need to hold it down first and that will determine the distance? Based on Sakurai's wording, I am going to assume it is the latter. Hopefully if this is the case, Greninja's charging will be brief or else it will limit you to how often you can use it to evade foes. Sakurai also states that you can move Greninja freely while charging up. I'm curious how that will work as generally, you will have to be holding the trigger to the side while charging the attack. However, how it could work is all you have to do is tilt the control stick to use the attack and then you can let it go. Afterwards, the only requirement is to hold down the B button and then access the control stick in order to mo freely move around. This attack does seem to be incredibly tricky to use, but effective if pulled off successfully, which seems to be the idea around Greninja's concept. What I like about this picture is that it basically confirms something I had been wondering about. If having a Final Destination version of every stage will be just an exclusive for the Wii U online mode for glory, or will it be available for local multiplayer as well? Seeing as the 3DS does not have a For Glory mode, this confirms that there will be a final destination of almost every stage even if you play locally. Almost every stage. I had long suspected that not every stage would have a final destination seeing as there are some stages that are constantly moving and do not have a consistent enough background in order to have a final destination version of it. For example, how would a prison tower final destination work? The whole point of the stage is that you're constantly moving up the tower, and with the Final Destination's trademark lack of gimmicks, I fail to see how they could turn Prism Tower into a Final Destination. This also confirms something that was incredibly obvious, but I was still wondering anyway. Would we have Final Destination's music, or would we have music based off the stage the Final Destination was made for? Sakurai confirms it is indeed the latter, something I am glad about. The whole reason why I try to avoid using Final Destination is because I would get sick of the music rather quickly. Don't get me wrong, it was entertaining, but if I had to use that stage every time, the music would make my brain about to explode. So I'm excited that we could still hear all our favorite Nintendo themes while playing on a non-gimmicky stage if we were just not in the mood to deal with random crap or just hate all non-Final Destination stages anyway. This was a brilliant idea, and it makes me more excited to see how the hardcore Smash gaming will be treated. They are no longer subjected to the same thing over and over again if they want a lack of gimmicks. Yeah, I really have no idea what this is. I mean, normally I would suggest it being a Final Smash, but we have seen Wii Fit Trainer's Final Smash before, and while the poses are included in it, like in this background, there's no circle and does not turn things upside down. I would also suggest it is a taunt, but again, it being upside down shoots that theory down. The last idea I got is that it is a stage and the poses of the trainer in the background determine which angle the battlers are on. However, there would usually be a platform and not just them walking in midair. Sorry guys, I don't have a clue what this thing is. Though I do not have much knowledge on the Kirby series, I was well aware that Tack was an enemy in the Smash run, as well as the fact that he steals stuff in the Kirby series. So I kind of figured that his role in this game mode was to steal what you were tasked to collect. I was not aware though that you can chase him down to get it back, though that is a wise design choice because if you had spent so much time hunting these powers down only to immediately lose it in a second, that would be a bit frustrating. Oh well, I plan to not even let these guys touch me. As soon as I see one, I'll kill them before they can even spot me. Wahaha, take that other players. 
Our final picture of the day is probably the most intriguing because it finally gives us knowledge of more version exclusives. Besides character roster, how the two versions differentiate from each other is probably what I am the most interested about these games that there has been a surprisingly lack of detail about. It helps me decide which version I should get, the cheaper 3DS version that comes out earlier, or the more powerful yet expensive Wii U version, or should I get both? Obviously the Wii U version is my priority in purchasing because it is more powerful and Smash Bros is more natural on a television screen as opposed to a tiny handheld. But still, if I'm buying something more expensive, I'd like there to at least be more pros besides just better graphics. And finally, finally we get some information about that. While the character roster is being limited by the 3DS, I'm really glad that the assist trophies and Pokeball Pokemon are not. I am assuming they are not cutting down assist trophies and Pokeball Pokemon in the 3DS version because of how many they can handle, but it is probably based on what they can do. The more flashier and dynamic ones will most likely just be on the Wii U version. I mean, it would be just ridiculous to have a bunch of generic and boring Pokeballs and assist trophies without any that feel more exciting, and I am glad the Wii U version is not being tied down by that. As for assist trophies and Pokeballs, that will not be in the 3DS version, I am not sure it will be ones that cause big blasts, as the 3DS seems to handle final smashes just fine. Instead, what the 3DS seems to be unable to do is have multiple things on the field at once, which is why Olimar can only have 3 Pikmin and now DDD can only throw Gordos. So probably stuff like the Unknown Swarm from uh, Melee or the Tinkles' Trophy in Brawl, both which involve spawning things, will be excluded. Though there aren't too many like that, Sakurai implies that most assists and Pokeballs will be consistent amongst both games. The Wii U version is a really powerful system, and I can't wait to see what it can do, and I'm glad it is not being tied down by the 3DS's limited power. Thank you all for watching this week's episode, and don't worry about the direct video, it's still coming, I just did not expect so much information, and that's why it's taking some time. Oh well, I digress. Anyways, tune in and subscribe for more uh, weeks coverage of the Smash Bros. Daily Pictures. Thanks and see you next week.